he was firm in what he what he thought, and uh, he was clear in uh, the fact that we should be uh, holy men. We should be living the religious life. That we should be uh, following the, what the church teaches, and we should be striving for holiness. And we should be attentive to our to our work, especially with our teaching work, which is so valuable and what uh, we were called on to do, and what he did so well. No one today can really claim to have known Father Flaff uh, intimately. Um, I certainly regarded him at a respectful distance while he was Superior General. But the last two years of his life, we had adjacent rooms at Charbonnel Hall, St. Michael's College. And I was still a little in distanced. And I asked him, Your Eminence, what can I call you? Your Eminence? He said, no, call me George. <laughs> we settled for Father. We really met uh, uh, in the church because he came down there to say to Corpus Christi to say Mass sometimes. We met him there before I went up to St. Michael's where he lived and uh, I knew him there then as I was, a, I was a student. And he was at the Pontifical Institute, but I uh, had contact with him now and again. From 1964 to 1967, for three years, I studied theology in Paris in the house that he established there. So I'm very grateful to him. It has influenced my whole academic career. Administratively, I suspect he didn't really have a very good preparation for being Superior General. He was educated in Strasbourg and Paris and uh, was happy as a lark at the Institute, uh, teaching uh, medieval uh, architecture and art. And, uh, uh, but we all knew that he had the, the wherewithal, he had the goods, he had the main thing, a, a great mind. And when the election came, there was really no doubt about it. His, his competitor uh, was uh, a rigorous Father O'Lone, and the rallying cry among Brazilians was, laugh with flaff, moan with O'Lone. But coming into the, the um, administration was something new, but a very intelligent man, a uh, very kind and open man, he was, he was a good leader. Right from the beginning, he wasn't out to catch people and <laughs> in trouble. On the contrary, he was he was in, uh, more concerned with uh, leading and uh, encouraging and uh, um, a positive a positive view of what was happening in the community and what we could all do and what he called on us to do. The Flaff years were years of growth and prosperity for the community. We had novitiates filled with as many as 40 young men. And um, he thought it important for him to concern himself with, uh, with the education of young men. Uh, he always had uh, study in mind. And that was more important than founding new uh, places, new houses where we would do work. There were 30 people in my novitiate in Pontiac and another 20 or 25 in the novitiate out here at Richmond Hill. So I mean 55 people in a novitiate class, we're lucky to have one now. So that's one of the differences between the church then and the church now. Uh, and those are for many sociological and I suppose theological reasons. So it, the church during his time as a superior general was a very different church from what he knew as Archbishop of Winnipeg. He was very much of the, uh, the goal between, uh, between the Brazilians in uh, Annonay and uh, the various places in France 
but he and he loved it. He spoke French, of course. He was fluent in French, and uh, he would visit. I was there in France at the time when this when the uh, union was going going forward. The process of union was a great pleasure to him. A great uh, one of his great achievements, of course and one of his great pleasures uh, was the grace of God that went that brought it about. But uh, he was certainly part of it and he was in there with both feet because he, he, he loved it. He loved it. He brought us back to our, to our, our origins and uh, really extended our, our thoughts and our, our feeling for the community. Shortly before he became Archbishop, he decided to establish a house of studies in Paris rather than in Rome or in Louvain or someplace else in Paris. It's because he loved Paris so much. <laughs> he also wanted Brazilians to have a sense of the French culture, partly because Canada is French and English, but because of the old world culture in Paris. For many years, since the late 20s, certainly early 30s, we had been trying to serve the immigrant Latino population in the South Texas area. Uh, we had men who went to, made great sacrifices in that regard because they was living in great poverty among poor people uh, who were mostly um, it couldn't speak English, and so our men had to learn the Spanish to minister to them. But Father Flaff went a greater step and said, let's now build something in Mexico itself. And he was the one who set up our, uh, with the Archbishop in Mexico City, our apostolate there. So I think that, ha and from there, uh, the, the, the um, bridge to Colombia was made, and that's where I think a great deal of our future lies. When he was called away from his studies and his superior generalship to be Archbishop of Winnipeg, he gave a farewell speech in the chapel underneath St. Basil's Church, and all the Brazilians in the area were there. It was very beautifully felt, but it was only about 10 minutes through, then he started to break down. And we were overawed because he was always a man completely in control and uh, eminently respectable. And some people were quite shocked to see this. Others, including, my, including myself, were touched because uh, it was obedience happening there and then. But he liked it when he got into it. He liked visiting far-flung places. And uh, it wasn't very long before uh, the next pope, Pope Paul, made him a cardinal. And then he did preparatory work for Vatican II. We lost him. I didn't, there wasn't much, was much influence after that. Uh, he was a great friend ever, and uh, it was great fun when he was, came back to talk to us. But uh, he went to a different life, you know, and he, he always supported the Brazilians and uh, loved the Brazilians and stayed a Brazilian, but uh, he was all taken up with, his, uh, with being a bishop and then an archbishop and a cardinal. Uh, it separated him completely, so to speak, from the, from the congregation, uh, except in friendship where he would come back. And I liked it very much that when Wally Platt wrote his biography of Cardinal Flaff in, I think it was 1999, that he chose as the title, Gentle Eminence. I think that title just summed it all up so very well.